This video is sponsored by Fiverr. And you guys have heard me talk about Fiverr before. It's a website that connects you with freelancers who can help you to build your brand. There are logo designers, copywriters, voiceover artists, website designers, and so much more. There is a link in the description that will take you to my curated store so you can see some of my favorite sellers over there on Fiverr. Today's been a bit of a weird day for me. It's Thursday, which is usually the day that I film my videos on, but I just have had no motivation to film any of the videos I already have planned. So I did what any reasonable person would do. I asked on Twitter and Instagram what you guys wanted me to make a video about today, and one of them really caught my eye, so we're gonna go on a little adventure. I'm gonna show you guys how I shoot photos of myself. Much better. One of the reasons that I bought my first camera was because I wanted to get better photos of myself to post on social media. You quickly realize that when you're the one with the camera, you actually end up taking photos of other people way more than you end up getting good photos of yourself. So along the way, I figured out a way that works for me to take more photos of me. Hopefully this way is helpful for you, but there are a couple other ways that I'll try to explain as I go. The way that I've found easiest to take photos of myself will work with most modern cameras, and that's to connect your camera to an app in your cell phone. Like I said, as long as you've got a fairly modern camera, most of these companies are now making some kind of an app that will connect to your camera and allow you to monitor what you're seeing and take the photo from your phone. That being said, most of the apps that I've used to try and do this are not exactly user-friendly. There might be a little bit of fighting to get it connected, you might lose some functionality that you normally have when you're taking photos. It's all a bit of a game of give and take. Here's what we're going to be shooting on today. Now first things first, we're going to need a tripod and that should be pretty obvious because if you're not holding the camera, who is? In this specific case, I'm using my older tripod because I'm currently using my new one to film this. Obviously, we're gonna need the camera. I've got the a7 III here. I guess I can take this off because I am no longer vlogging with it. I've switched over to the a6400 for video. So we've got the a7 III, and we're gonna be trying out the Viltrox 85 millimeter f1.8. I have tried this on my a6500, but I haven't tried it since I bought a full frame camera. Slap this guy on the tripod and we're ready to go. So first and foremost, I like to just set up my shot and make sure that I like it. Obviously there's some people walking through it right now, but that's okay. It's feeling pretty good. Maybe we could move to the left and get this centered up a little better though. Mm -hmm. That's better. So this is gonna be a little bit different on every camera. And the first way, like I said, is to connect to the phone. So in the Sony cameras, we're gonna go into the menu. We're gonna go up to the top, go over to the little world thing and go control with smartphone. Turn that on and hit connection. Now, because I had previously been connected to this phone, it automatically connected again, but there'll be some kind of a Wi-Fi password or QR code that you can scan, or you can use the NFC, I believe it's called, and scan that. There'll be a bunch of different ways that you can connect. Like I said, in this case, because I was previously connected, it knew to reconnect. So as you can see here, I've got mirroring displays. Interesting how different the color is in each of them. So now that I'm connected, I'm gonna keep an eye on my phone and I'm gonna go stand in front. So the first round is generally just me checking to make sure that once it gets focused on me that I still like the composition and everything. In this case, I do think it's looking pretty good. I like that you can still see a little bit of the bridge, although maybe F1.8 is a little too blurry in the background. Let's try F2.8 and I'm gonna have to, oops. And then I'm gonna have to crank up my ISO a little bit to get my exposure proper. Let's go hang out back in front again. There's the F1.8 shot and the F2.8 shot. 
and generally I'm pretty happy with how that's looking, so now it would just be a matter of going out in front of the camera, trying a bunch of different poses, holding a camera or something to give it more interest in the shot. This isn't a particularly interesting shot inherently, but I think it's looking pretty decent. And of course, because we're all on Instagram nowadays, let's flip that sideways and do a couple more. One other thing to note is that I personally like to shoot portraits at at least 1 100th of a second, if not 1 1 25 or more. The reason for that is because all of the little tiny movements that your model is making are going to affect how sharp your shot is. So if you're looking to get sharper portraits, make sure you're shooting at a fast enough shutter speed. I am losing my light real fast, but before I get on to telling you an alternate way that you can also take photos of yourself, I want to talk about today's sponsor. So you've taken a bunch of photos of yourself, maybe you've made some presets, you want to put them up on your website, but you don't know how to build a website, you need to make a logo, you got to do all sorts of stuff to get this stuff out there on the internet, and you might not know how to do that. This is where Fiverr comes in. Fiverr empowers the creative community by connecting you with freelancers who can take care of some of those things that you might not want want to or know how to do. Fiverr has that talent on the website and they can connect you instantly. Literally, you can go on there and find so much and all you have to do is click a button and you'll have an order made. There are different options for all sorts of budgets and all sorts of projects, so use that link in the description to go check out my custom curated Fiverr store, see some of the people that I recommend, some of the people that I've worked with in the past, and if you'd like to see something else on my store, make sure to hit me up. Thank you to Fiverr for sponsoring this video. Now back to being vain and taking photos of ourselves. Oh man, it's starting to get dark. Let's crank this up. I tried to catch golden hour, but it just went from like bright to dark. So personally, I think connecting to the app, even though it has its disadvantages and it can be a little bit glitchy at times, is probably the easiest way for me to take photos of myself. But there is an alternative that I also recommend, and that's by using an interval timer. Now again, this might be something that's built into your camera. The newer Sony cameras all have interval timers. The old ones had the Play Memories app where you could get an interval timer, but you can also buy one to plug into your camera, I will leave a link in the description and you can go find one from there. So let me see if I can show you how to make that happen. Now again, this might be different on your camera, but I'll show you it's in the first menu on the fourth page. We're gonna go to interval shooting function. I'm gonna go to interval shooting, turn it on. We're gonna take one every, let's say, yeah, three seconds should be okay. We're gonna wait for 10 seconds to get in place. The number of shots we're gonna take is 10. Now, one of the catches with interval shooting is that depending on what your camera is, it's going to be different as far as how the autofocus works. In this case, I've never had good luck getting the interval shooter to autofocus in between shots. So what I'm gonna have to do this time is actually set a manual focus point and just try and stick with it. Now, especially at f1.8, this is gonna be a little difficult, but what I'm gonna do is go set my backpack out where I'm gonna stand and then focus on that. Focus on that, and then I'm gonna flip it into manual focus and tilt it back up. Now I'm gonna say a little prayer and go stand where I was. These are super moody, mostly because it's starting to get so dark out here that I'm actually getting underexposed. And all I did here was moved back and forth a little bit so that I had some variance just in case the focus was off a little bit. Hopefully at least one of them was in focus. Oh look, I went way too far forward on that one. But I think that one looks pretty cool. So if you've seen photos of me up on my Instagram, that's probably how they were taken. It's not an easy process and it's definitely not foolproof and sometimes it just doesn't work out. But it's a lot of fun, it's quite challenging. And if that kind of thing just isn't for you, then I would just say go shooting with friends and have them take photos of you. Thank you to Donnie Ducktails, who was the one that suggested this. I know a couple other people have suggested it in the past before, but when I reached out today, he was the one who said it. And thanks to Fiverr for sponsoring this video. Video. Again, the link is in the description if you want to go check out my curated store. As always, I want to hear from you. Is there a different way that you shoot photos of yourself? Let me know in the comments and on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Holy crap, it's getting so cold out here. This is fall in Edmonton. It'll be winter in a week.